Welcome to the final segment on the inflammatory myopathies. At this stage, we've generalized the features of this disease condition and discussed the three main forms of the disease in detail. We'll now take a few moments to summarize this discussion of inflammatory myopathies, which should help you in answering questions regarding inflammatory myopathies on tests. For all three conditions, the initial presentation pattern involves muscle weakness with insidious onset. For dermatomyositis and polymyositis, weakness follows a bilateral limb girdle pattern, and blood tests will demonstrate elevations in creatine kinase and autoimmune antibodies, such as anti-nuclear antibodies and rheumatoid factor. Dermatological changes, such as Gautron's papules and a raccoon mask, may accompany or precede weakness with dermatomyositis, but an absence of skin manifestations should not be used to exclude dermatomyositis from the differential diagnosis, as the skin manifestations may have yet to develop. With inclusion body myositis, weakness can be asymmetrical and involve forearm flexors, knee extensors, and dorsiflexors. Blood work shows modest increases in creatine kinase levels, and autoimmune markers are generally absent. The muscle biopsy is necessary to confirm a diagnosis for any of these conditions. Inflammation around the endomesial lining indicates polymyositis and should be positive for CD8 plus cytotoxic T cells. Inflammation localized to the paramecium is a stronger indicator of dermatomyositis and should be positive for CD4 plus helper T cells. The main finding associated with inclusion body myositis are vacuoles and protein aggregates in the cytoplasm with variable degrees of endomesial inflammation. Treatment for both dermatomyositis and polymyositis involves corticosteroids, followed by immunosuppressants if the patient does not respond to the corticosteroid treatment. Little can be done in the case of inclusion body myositis, and a referral for occupational therapy is likely warranted. That concludes this session on the inflammatory myopathies. In the next session, we look at another form of myopathy that generates an inflammation response, infectious myositis.